Welcome back to ASM at PAX Online 2021. Here we have Prophet Black running. Sorry, let me get the name again. Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. Prophet, take it away. Yeah, it's a bit of a tongue tie, eh? So, um, so there's about two and a half minutes of cutscene. So I'm pretty much going to get straight into the game. So I'm ready when you guys are ready. We're ready. Cool. Uh, three, two, one, go. Uh, so yeah, this is um, Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game of the movie. Uh, it gets easier to say the more you say it. Um, this was released on, well, in 2005 on the PS2, original Xbox, GameCube, and I believe PC. Um, and then was re-released in 2007 on the Xbox 360 as a launch title, which is um, the current version I'm playing. So there's about, yeah, two, two and a half minutes of just uh, exposition right now. Um, if you look closely, they have their shoes on the wrong feet, so I don't know what's to deal with that, but, you know, that's life, I guess. Wake up in the morning, put your shoes on the wrong feet, so. But yeah, so, this is a uh, pretty exciting for me. I haven't done anything like this before. Um, I've only been running this game since, I believe, January or February of this year. Uh, I always loved the game as a kid. Uh, I just was looking for something to speed run, and this game just spoke to me, because for the longest time, it's the only game I actually owned on the... PS2, or the only FPS game I owned on the PS2, so um, I've had countless amounts of hours put into this game. Uh, the run is totally different playing casually, there's a lot of skips and tricks that I will uh, be showing and demonstrating. Uh, a lot of fire skips, a lot of, uh, this game's notorious for soft locking, so there might be a few instances where I have to save and quit and reload because uh, you can no longer progress, obviously it's a soft lock, so. Um, and there is maybe one instance where the game could crash, uh, but I haven't had that. I actually had that the other day, but since then I haven't had it since. So, so yeah. Uh, and we also have an incentive going to save and or kill Kong. I'm a save Kong fan. I just kind of picture it as like the 2016 alternate timeline where we save Harambe. Uh, so that's pretty much just what I've been calling it. So. Yeah. Yes, we do have uh, that incentive currently open at the moment. Kill is on $200 so far, and save is on $180. If you want to get in there, exclamation mark, donate, and specify what incentive you want in the comments. Yeah, I I, I prefer everyone to hit the that save uh, incentive, but if you want to kill my boy, then so be it. Uh, there'd be uh, no hard feelings, eh? But yeah, poor Harambe. So this is one of those awkward situations that if... I woke up and someone was in my face like this, I'd be definitely uh, be a bit threatened. It's bad enough that my cat does that to me at 3 o'clock in the morning, but uh, I guess it's a video game. So so I'll be doing a lot of diagonal movement because that's like, the optimal movement. Uh, as you can see here, there's an invisible barrier that you can't cross until the other NPCs come in and uh, talk to me. So. Uh, there's a lot of, this game's almost like a babysitting simulator as well. You have to wait for a lot of people, uh, mainly these uh, three. There is a, there is a fourth one you have to wait for named Jimmy, which we'll probably meet around the 40 minute to hour mark of the game. So I'm um, just waiting for Hayes to tell me he's got a weapon for me. There we go. Uh, also, the turning sensitivity is ridiculously slow. Not sure why. Um, you can't increase it. Must be a, you know, an old school game thing. So I know I have subtitles on, which might be annoying for some people, but for purposes like this, where they yell, help me. Because um, sometimes you can't really hear them, because if you walk too far away, they will yell it, but you can't hear it, and then it will kill run. So um, any circumstance then, I probably will reset, purely based on Hayes being grabbed by the uh, little crab. But... Uh, now we just have to wait. So a lot of uh, double-handed doors, and you got to wait for NPCs. There's a particular point where we wait roughly 30 seconds for someone to help uh, pull the door. I don't know what he's doing right now. Dawdling, that's what he's doing. Yeah, so this would be a point in the actual run where I would probably reset. So, because Hayes took about 12 years to get to the door. So the whole... Uh, the if anyone has or hasn't seen the film, the whole point of it is uh, Jack Black there, or Carl Denham, is a movie producer slash director. Um, and he told a film studio that he was going to Singapore to film a film in real, uh, 
you know, realistically, he was coming to Skull Island to film it, which was a myth. It actually didn't exist. And uh, it just kind of, the map just kind of looked like a, uh, a bit of paper with a coffee stain on it. So. Uh, coming up is like the first, I guess, boss of the game. It's not a very hard one. I was convinced for the longest time that the guy who had a world record was cheating because he killed this, uh, killed the crab pretty quickly, but uh, the more I played it, I just realized if you get in the crab's face and give it zero to no personal space, he uh, he drops dead pretty quick. So I'll be doing that in a second. So I just get in his grill, ask him how his day's been, uh, reload, and now he's dead. Cool. So I don't know what, so as you can probably see, the NPCs... Uh, sometimes I have no clue what they're doing. I almost call it like bad RNG, but it's not really a, a random number generation uh, situation. So, a lot of these doors, ideally, you don't want to open yourself. You have to wait for the uh, the other characters to um, open it for you. And sometimes, as we saw with Hayes, because he was injured, he uh, takes his sweet time. So... This is a, a lot of situations where that happens, or uh, where Anne has to open a door for you. I didn't know that broke if you walked into it, so that's good to know. <laughs> you learn something new every day, eh? So have a lot of these doors, which is... Uh, later on in the game, you get a... Uh, what is it called? A sniper rifle, which one-shots them, so it's quicker than actually just bashing the door. So this is a circumstance where you got to run far ahead, and normally... Uh, during a good run at like the six minute 19 second mark if Jack Black runs down here uh, You're making good pace, but anything later than that. You're probably gonna uh, have a bad time. So In my PB he took him forever to get here. My split was around seven minutes uh, Which isn't very good. So it's like I said I Because it's early game. There's a lot of time where I would reset but, you know, for the marathon purposes, I'm just let you experience the hell of the game in its entirety, so. But yeah, so they were, this is the, technically the second level, the first level was the one on the boat before. Um, but yeah, so we're coming up to the second level now. I love the, uh, you could try to beat a lot of the characters to the weapons, so, um, for some weird reason here, you gotta try to beat Hayes. It's an obvious reason, but... If you're too slow walking out of the cutscene, so I think it walks. You can actually walk while the screen's black, or a cutscene's playing. So, uh, as you'll see as Kong later on in the game, he'll. I'll be playing parts of the level while the cutscene is playing. Um, and here's another like hazard in the game that you got to. You burn it with fire, essentially. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there is a couple of times where instead of burning it, there's like a tiny gap, like that big, and you kind of just squeeze through it. So that's towards the end of the game. So the end of the game is like a pretty fast pace in comparison. You just skip a lot of things. Um, so this part here, we come to a dead end. Uh, everyone's going to take their time. What I'm going to do here is if Anne has a spear, which she does, uh, we light that spear on fire because she is Chris Kyle with a spear. She doesn't miss. So, which is really handy, and plus the fire increases the damage you know, slightly. I, I'm not sure about how the, the damage counts work in the game. Uh, so the first millipede always spawns from here. If they want to spawn at all. Uh, but after that, it's random where they spawn. So you have, there you go, Chris Kyle. Uh... So obviously an ideal run is they spawn where I look. But there's only three locations they can spawn from. Uh, but sometimes... So... It happens a few times, I'm not really sure why, where... Sometimes... Haze there will... Uh, when he shoots enemies, he actually damages them, but there's other times where... He doesn't do that. So... I'm not sure why that works. Later on the level you see him shooting... Um, Dinosaurs when they get introduced and he like you can see the bullets hitting him, but nothing happens so uh, So this is like the first uh, I guess the first skip of the game. It's like a, a checkpoint death skip So pretty easy to learn you just gonna with diagonal movement run as fast as you can uh, so the idea is to 
like I said. <laughs> so you hear uh, Hayes yelling at Jack and help and some intense music playing. As long as I can drop off the cliff here, um, I've skipped the checkpoint. So, and I just keep going because I can suicide, but we don't have to. So we skip that part, which you don't have to kill any of the millipedes that come at you. So there's a lot of, uh, so this is part in particular, a lot of babysitting parts. So we climb up here. So Anne decides wants, she wants to come with us. Um, but I'm going to skip ahead and try to kill these guys here. As best I can. So what happens here is these uh, millipedes try to attack her. They don't really try to attack her, they kind of just like cuddle her as she's climbing up the wall. But uh, one shot with the pistol kills them. So the weapons in this game, we've got uh, the pistol, there is a shotgun, which we'll only use once, a sniper rifle, and a Thompson. Uh, the Thompson's the worst gun in the game, and for, I don't know why, it just doesn't do a lot of damage for some weird reason. The best gun is either the uh, the pistol or the, the sniper rifle. So, uh, there's also a uh, ADS in this game, but uh, you never use it. It's not it's not optimal. Was she throwing a spear out? What the hell? Oh, there we go. So actually, I've never seen it happen before. Crazy stuff, eh? So it's ideal. So we have to do another skip here, which is fire skip, which is probably one of the harder tricks for me to learn. The hardest one I will try my best to explain how I set it up afterwards. Um, but obviously you've got to hold the fire spear for it to stay ignited. Otherwise, if you leave it on the floor too long, it will just lose uh, ignition. Which isn't perfect. So this part here, we skip the waterfall by just spamming into the side here. Cool. So this is the first level where we may soft lock. Um, so I'll show you in a sec. So you know what? The there's a waterfall there, which I probably should have explained before, that prevents you from taking fire through till this level. So there's a few of those set up later on. So what actually happens here is Anne's meant to climb up there, um, throw a spear down here for you, and then she uh, it, like, covers you while you run through croc-infested waters. Uh, the game soft locks here if you take a fire spear through, which is weird because realistically you should be able to do that. But from all the experiences I've had, the game just soft locks. So yeah, it might happen here. I had tried to do a run early this morning just to mentally prepare myself, and uh, it soft locks. So I just kind of gave up. <laughs> so luckily we're only what like 15 odd minutes into the run. But ideally, the first part up until a level called sacrifice, you would just reset. So, uh, so what normally happens here is she stand here waiting for you. She might see a glitch in. Nope. So normally what I check for, I will check now. Thanks. Is if she's running you there, she, you haven't soft locked. If she's not there when you check, uh, you've probably soft locked the game. And you can, she still talks regardless of if she's actually there or not, because I don't think the, uh, I think the audio is scripted. So let's kill this guy up here. Turn around and make sure she's near me. There she is. So we haven't soft locked. Perfect. So this this soft locking here is a, a pretty big run killer in my opinion. And sometimes what happens is these scorpions here don't die. And if you try to like ignore them, they will just grab Anne. And then she will die and that's it. And you gotta either restart your split or, or restart the game. Where did my spear go? So another cool trick here with fires to get ahead is as soon as it starts to like shrink down, you can run through it. There you go. Which I feel like is not how fire works. You know, fire will be hot regardless of how big or small it is. So that part there is a dialogue skip. You just get haze to throw you the gun early. And then Jack Black will put the bridge down. His name's Carl Denham, but I always refer to him as Jack Black just because it's easy to remember for me. It's not that I forget his name, but Let's get out of here. if I could run, that'd be fantastic. Uh, so coming up here is another another death skip. 
So we have a few categories. I kill this guy here. So this is any percent. Uh, but we do have a glitchless category, which obviously uh, prevents you from using death skips. So if you're interested in running this game, I really, I, I really recommend this game to be honest. I think it's it's fairly easy, and if not running through like glitchless attempts aren't your thing, we have spheres only, 100%, uh, which involves saving our boy Harambe. And now we just wait for this bat to kill us. What can happen sometimes, and it's happened to me on uh, PB attempts, is that Millipede there will kill the bat, and then you have to kill yourself with fire, which isn't ideal. So now we just come through here, pop that, pop that, pop him. And now just wait for this fire to go down, and we run for dear life. Probably have to kill this dude. So these are normally the, uh, so anything past, actually up until the next level is normally where I'll reset if, uh, things aren't going my way. I don't know what I'm stuck on. So now this is the part where we wait for Anne to, uh, come through. Yeah, Jack Black Pog. The reason I, <laughs> I love this game so much is because of Jack Black and, uh, Tenacious D. I don't know if anyone's familiar with Tenacious D, but he's in a band. Um, I feel I feel like everyone knows that, but yeah, I loved Tenacious D as a kid. Probably wasn't the best choice because if you listen to their first album, is not friendly for kids. Um, I was in how old was I? I was like five or six when the first album came out, and there is no way my parents should have let me listen to that. So I feel like I'm a I'm a hardened man now because of it, but I probably shouldn't have been listening. <laughs> definitely shouldn't have been listening to that stuff as a kid. Yes, yeah, so now where's Anne? I don't know where she is. She's behind there. So what happens here is we have this door to open and surprise, surprise, there's people chilling on the other side waiting for us. Any of the uh, eagled eye viewers would have seen that. Uh, you could have seen one before because we were playing like re relatively fast. So, Because uh, yeah, you're obviously not meant to skip that. You're meant to see him run around. So this is Sacrifice. So this is the part of the game slash film where the Skull Islanders, this is probably like the two and a half hour mark of the film, even though the film goes three and a half hours, because they spent about what feels like 20 years on the boat, on the venture, which luckily we spend zero to no time. Uh, so ideally we'd normally look over here, just wait for Jack Black to come in and tie us, but I guess for the, the purpose of showcasing this game, I'll show, I'll try to show the cutscenes the best I can. So it'd be like the beginning one with the people with two left feet. Um, normally you just look down pretty much straight away from where you are. So you see this is Anne coming down. Being sacrificed by the Skull Islanders. And soon you'll get our first glimpse of our boy Harambe. Oh, it's like King Harambe Kong, as uh, I feel like he should be known as. But yeah, normally at this point, this, uh, this part goes for like three to four minutes. It's a real... Real drag, to be honest. Like, this is a probably good time. Any bathroom breaks, <laughs> I know we take one at this is point. It, but you can. Is it uh, also a good time for a cheeky donation. Ah, uh, yes, yes, it is. Good. We have ten dollars here from Not Profit Black, who says, "I know I just said to save Kong, but I'm feeling evil to say out with Kong, and they've put that towards kill Kong." Oh my God! It's up to two hundred and ten dollars versus one hundred and eighty dollars. To save Kong. If you want to get in there, exclamation mark and donate an exclamation mark incentives. Just take a look at the incentives. We've also got another one coming up for a run later on uh, with Super Mario World Inner Six bonus race, which will be raced immediately after in the donors co op run. That's definitely one to check out. We are at 250 out of $700. Oof. You got to get in there with your, uh, with your donations, people. It's for a good cause, so why not, right? Yeah, so the anti me seemed. I don't know who the uh, anti profit black is, but uh, he must be like negative me, my my evil twin. But screw that guy! How dare you? You got to save our boy Harambe. But no, I appreciate the donations. But yeah, if you want to see uh, see Kong <laughs> live, uh, definitely vote for the or donate to the uh, incentive. But it's up to you. I'm not gonna force you to do anything. But if you love Harambe as much as I love Harambe. Then uh, 
I think you should get up get up in it. Cool. Oh, that was good. So normally, like sometimes the they throw spears at you because you're like scoping. Uh, and sometimes it's uh, kind of stupid because you kind of have to detour off from where you are to grab a fire spear because it's kind of important for this next part. So this is uh, this part up here is where they first introduce the Velociraptors or Ventosaurus as they are referred to in this game. Uh, I don't know why they didn't just call them like Velociraptors. Even the 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 T Rexes, the T Rexes are referred to uh, referred to as V Rexes. Um, I don't know. Like I didn't think you could copyright. Uh, <laughs> No dinosaur names, but I don't know if that's what's happened. But yeah, yeah, I always just call them T-Rexes for the for the sake of it, you know. Where's my spear? Cool. So we just gotta wait for Jack Black to run through his door here. And he'll tell me there's something up there. Now we just wait. So I think a fire spear is roughly a three shot kill. Uh, but what we can do here is let him get close to us, knock him back, and the fire will kill him instantly. Also here, a centipede will spawn, and we just wait. Nab, get that going. So this part's kind of risky. Uh, what we have to do is try hit him with the same spear three times by getting in his face. And if you're not fast enough, he will kill you. Uh, bang. So what I need to do here is try to do this as quick as I can because two little dinosaurs spawn. And uh, you can skip killing them if you do this quick enough. As you'll see, jump down. I think I've done it. They actually might hit me. Okay, I just made that. Crazy. And sometimes if you listen carefully, you can hear Jack Blake screaming for help. But, you know, stuff him. Cool. So this is a, a level where we have another boss fight and also have another... I guess it's like an interaction skip. So what normally is meant to happen is, uh, so we're following Kong at this point to rescue Anne, as you can see that she's, or hear that she's yelling for help. Uh, but what happens is Jack Black stops the film, The Carnage, because, you know, he wants to make his film, and he's pretty proud about it. But what actually happens is he gets swooped up by a big blue bat, or I think it's, I used to call them pterodactyls, but it's, it's definitely a humongous bat. It's like a big version of like a massive version of those. Um, so what happens is he gets nabbed by a big blue one and then takes it to his nest. But waiting for him to get kidnapped and all that stuff just takes too long. So I'm just going to run ahead. And then it'll be a part in a second where I will uh, unfortunately have to commit suicide. But it's all well and good because, you know, we spawn back and Jack Black will as well. So, by skipping this part here, oh crap, I see it, by skipping it, if I was to run straight ahead, I'll show you in a second actually, it's probably easier to explain it, to show it than explain it. So right now I'm just trying to run as fast as I can, uh, you don't have to burn that uh, bush there, but I found it slightly faster to do that. Um, and what we have to do here is try to keep balance, because the bats will try and knock us off. Uh, I don't know if you can see Jack Black. A little interesting tech thing that can happen here is sometimes the the bats will push you, which is like obviously gives you more speed. Perfect. The bats on this part are really annoying, especially because you, oh god, because if they hurt you, it's not the best. Go away, die. Cool. So what we do here is touch the butch slightly, and then just walk off this platform here. By doing that, um, it allows Jack Black to spawn on the nest. If we were just to walk straight ahead, uh, you'd see him get dropped down, but he won't be up here. So, so we have to kill all the little minion bats before the big blue one wants to come in and hurt us. It's kind of important to... So I have already don't have enough ammo to kill this thing now, so there is another gun down there which I'll use. But ideally we just wait for it to get close. Uh, and then in hopes can kill the little bats, which may or may not kill Jack Black if we let them live. So a bit, a uh, bit ruthless at parts. So there's this one down. Well, I forgot to didn't mention earlier. This game works as I believe. I'm not sure if it's Crash Bandicoot or Spyro. Um, Clock might be able to correct me that 
the game changes difficulty based on how well you're playing. Uh, so there might be yeah. instances in the game where uh, you... Oh, you died. Cool. Yeah, so you were saying something, Clock? That would be Sparrow 3. There you go. So yeah, this game uh, will change its difficulty based on how well you're playing. So having a few intentional deaths is probably good because it will reduce the difficulty down slightly. All that does is just... Uh, so for here, if I died like three or four times here, what would actually happen is... Oh, I actually might die here. There might just be less bats the next time I... There we go, I died. Crazy. Um, yeah, so there might be less bats. You can just hear them trying to mold me to death. But yeah, so there could be less bats here. Okay, which is handy. But, uh, realistically, you don't want to... Any deaths that aren't intentional are bad deaths, so... I had a, a run the other day where I was on pretty much, like, world record pace. So as you can see, there's now one less bat. So yeah, I had a run the other day and I was on world record pace and uh, skipping ahead too fast actually uh, caused me to miss all the cutscenes, all the checkpoints, and then the game spawned me back at the very beginning of the level and it cost me about four minutes, which was what I needed to get WR. There you go. But that's okay. Yeah. That section there, I would have probably definitely reset if I died normally, but... Because we're only, what, like, roughly 25, 30 minutes into the run, so... I know I'm making good time if I can complete, um... Uh, the first Kong level in... Around... Um... In around, like, 40 minutes, maybe just under, so... So, just waiting for Jack Black to come to the door... So I actually grab fire, which I wasn't meant to. You need to have no fire for this next part. Because what we need to do is uh, bait the Velociraptors, aka Ventosaurus, into a bush that we then set on fire. So there's bait in this game, which we can use to lure um, the dinosaurs or millipedes or whatever away. Uh, it's used quite a bit at the beginning of the run. Uh, towards the end, not so much. Yeah. So, and there's a little cheeky skip coming up here, which, uh, believe it or not, is, uh, you're allowed to do in the glitchless category. Um, so these spiders here, for some weird reason, they've kind of neglected, so you can just go behind them and grab the, uh, grab the spear, or grab the, uh, handle for the door. Um, so those two dinos there, I'm gonna have to try to lure into a bush, which isn't too hard, because, you know, they eat anything. I don't know why, they've got, like, a perfectly good meal there. I don't know why they'd, uh... You know, go for a widgety grub, where the hell this is. And also you gotta be careful, because throwing the spear, you can... Um, accidentally knock down the fire. Which then, they won't run into the bush if there's fire. So one spawns here. There he is. So saving my ammo is really crucial on this, uh, on this part here. Mainly because the next section I need around 30 bullets to kill three dinosaurs. Because you only have access to about uh, three spears. But to enable to grab the spears, there is uh, some backtracking involved, which uh, isn't worth it. So, uh, lucky for us, there is guns in here somehow. Uh, normally, the guy flying around called Anglehorn, he drops like stuff down. But how they got in here and sat there perfectly is a mystery. So ideally here, we want to try to kill the centipedes before they spawn. They will jump out thing and kill me. Or at least attempt to kill me. Uh, so uh, shots to the head with the centipedes at one shot. Other than that, that will take dying three shots to the body. So this part here, we just kind of run ahead, leave Jack Black defending himself. He won't die, surprisingly, even though there's creepy crawlies. I just think he gets stuck. Uh, as you can, you know, that part where I walked into water. I think he just gets stuck there and doesn't move. I'm not really sure. But, so what we do is kill that. Oh, not kill it, just hurt him. Still has a spear stick out of him. Uh oh. Cool. Where's the other one? There he is. Dead. Perfect. Seven bullets is probably enough to kill the next one. But... 
as long as it all goes to plan, and if he jumps down early enough, I should be able to kill him uh, with the fire. So what sometimes happens is he'll... It's an old game, so a lot of like glitches happen, because you're not, obviously not to play it this fast. So if he jumps down, no, he's just going to stand there and stare at me. Uh oh, jump down. There we go. Perfect. Yeah, so what can happen there, which has happened to me a few times on another like PB world record attempt, is that he decided to jump over the fire, or I missed the spear. So I need to be backwards just so I can see Hayes walk up. This isn't gonna work. My boy tried to get back up by the looks of things, so. Let's wait for Hayes to come. So that part up there, you're meant to get the Thompson at, off him, and the uh, dinosaur that we just killed then will jump over and try to attack us, but it's, it's just faster to, um, you know, run ahead and he'll come to you anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So there's a neat little trick coming up here, which I did really well the other day when I played this. If you just hug the wall here, you can kind of walk around instead of walking into the water up to about here, where now you just have to walk casually. So this, uh... So these levels like here are on the back end of a few levels, uh, but later on I just kind of stand alone levels, which I don't know if they had a quota to meet where they needed to have like a certain amount of levels, because there's roughly 40 in the game, including the credits. Um, but they must have had a quota where they needed to have put so many levels in the game, and towards the end they're like, oh, we don't have enough. So they just uh, throw these in. Yeah, so... And this, uh, this game differs from the movie a little bit in the in the sense that the, the order that people die in and also uh, people dying. So there's a few characters, especially in this next part, that will die uh, now, but in the film they either die earlier or don't die at all. So so this is the first intro, introduction of the V-Rex, which is just a big T-Rex. Uh, for the cinematic purposes, I will show everyone what happens. So, we, I haven't seen this for ages, by the way. Like, I just run ahead and just throw spears in the air. So, ready? So, this is a V-Rex. They are an unkillable enemy as Jack. Uh, but as Kong, you can slap the living crap out of them. So... So the aim for this next part here is, uh, so the two guys here, Hayes and Carl, aka Jack Black, will attempt to open the door, and what you're actually meant to do is run around, kill some bats, um, but what I'm going to do is kind of impractical. So first of all, I'm going to try to turn him into a porcupine or a hedgehog, uh, whatever your preference is, and just throw these uh, bone shards, which are unlimited, but do next to no damage. So a regular enemy... So they, like the V-Rex is the inconvenience. So what I actually do here is just stand here, wait for him to get close, and pop him in the head a few times. And he will just, every time I shoot him in the head, he just roars at me. Um, he doesn't like it, it gives him a bit of a headache. Uh, but what can happen is, sometimes if you don't shoot him in succession or quick enough, he'll uh, lock on to either uh, Carl or Hayes. Um, and then, like here, and then attempt to eat him. Which has never happened to me, but... See? Uh, so there's an interesting part coming up where... It's a bit, a bit random where Hayes may or may not shoot. Uh, so... If you want to play along, put in the chat whether or not you think Hayes will, uh, will shoot or not shoot. I think... Oh, crap. Most of the time he... There we go, cool. Most of the time he does shoot, but on the off chance he won't shoot. So... Put your guesses in the chat. I'd be interested to see what people say. If you're a gambling man, definitely uh, have a punt in the chat. So I'll, it's pretty much this part here. So we're hiding from the V-Rex, which busts... No, he busts through a door on the left-hand side, but we don't see that. So you'll see uh, Hayes here slowly lurking to the front, and he may or may not shoot. <laughs> so let's just watch Hayes, because... The v just says its own thing. Just look at his gun, he may or may not flash. Oh, he's shot crazy. He actually shoots the majority of the time. <laughs> so... I don't know why that is. Like, I don't know what, like... 
makes him go, like, all right, I'll shoot the gun, or I won't. So mistakes I've made here before is, um, once the V-Rex turns around, sometimes if you're too eager um, and walk past him, he will actually just eat you. And then you'll reset from when he first busts through the door here. Which, I don't know, was, was that like roughly like 30 seconds to a minute of cutscene? So, but yeah, so this next part here, we gotta run ahead, um, stick the lever into the door, and this is one of the first parts where we become by ourselves. But I can't wait by the door because for some reason, like, so Jack Black wants to film the V Rex. Uh, but if you wait down there, Hayes will just scream Jack until you, you know, comfort him, I guess, and ask him if he's okay. So you have to wait for... There's, like, an, a queue that says, this way, Jack, and that's when you know you can move on. It's, yeah, so this is the ADS in the game. <laughs> you won't ever see me use. Um, I didn't know it was even in the game when I first played it. I kind of just... And even then, like, the... For the speedrun to be eligible, you have to have the, uh, see the Thompson on the top right of the screen. You have to, so that's your inventory essentially. You have to have that showing in order to, uh, for this to be like a legitimate run. If that doesn't happen, then obviously your run is illegitimate. So this is the first part where we, we kind of just leave everyone. But you know, it's a speedrun, so we normally just run away from everyone anyway. So. In about, what, a level? One level? Let's see if I can get that. Nope. Missed again. Crazy. Then my spear. Cool. I know he's grabbing a spear for safety just so you can uh, shoot these guys away. Otherwise, I think three hits from these guys will um, kill you. And if you just keep them away. Cool. But it's kind of handy. If they do hit you, as soon as you hit this water here that they can't cross for some bizarre reason. You just get all your health back. There's a few instances where that happens. Um, where are they? Here. So this is uh, one of those babysitting sections. So after this level will be our first introduction of Kong. The, uh, the, uh, <laughs> the guy in the box art, which you play as very little in the actual game itself. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm not really a, overly a big fan of the, uh, the Kong levels. My favourite level is probably the log, which you'll see coming up. Mainly because I hold the world record on that one, when it comes to level runs, so. And my least favourite level is one called the Swamps, where the, uh, the NPCs just don't want to be your, your friends and just stay behind and, you know, it, which gets really annoying. So part here, I just got to try kill as much of these as I can, because they will kill Anne. You see why the Thompson sucks, because just about 20 bullets where you can get three pistol shots into them and they'll die. Oh, I just double shot them, never seen that before in my life. But yeah, so what happens here is Anne gets kidnapped by a big, uh, another big bat. And what can happen is if you don't kill enough of the, uh, the medium-sized bats, they can actually kill her while she's uh, floating around. You'll see her, them attacking her. So if you leave too many, they will just kill her. Which doesn't help. So yeah, this part coming up here is our first Kong level. Uh, it's important as Jack that we hold a spear going to the end of this level. Because that's crucial for the level after this one. So with Kong, it's a slightly different... The controls are completely different. When you play as Jack, you use... Um, obviously, your thumbsticks and the triggers. Uh, but this, you only use, like, the X, A, and B, and Y. Which is... Uh, it's okay. I feel like it made more sense of the trigger slap, but this game was made in 2005. Or, well, this one was actually released in 2007, as I said before, but... You know, it is what it is. So that tech I'm using right now is... It's how you like... It's like a, the, the best way for speed. Um, but it also damages enemies, which is your, probably your best form of attack. Other than your grab, which against the bats, you can't grab until they're on the floor. 
So let's get up. Jump. So this is the part where it really becomes Harambe Simulator. Just use it. So like that attack is just like a charge essentially. And there is a another thing you can do where it activates a fury mode which gets introduced to you in a second. But if you use that, it, everything goes into like slow motion which for a speed run is not ideal. So this is where I first use the the grab. You, I can sometimes you get an extra hit off, but it very rarely works. Um, the reason I meet the bat closest to the edge because it sometimes drops to the floor, um, and you don't want him to drop to the floor because that's a time loss. So the closer you can get to the boundary or the the edge here, where he won't like stumble to the floor, is a win. Because. You'll see in a second, there's another instance, so this guy takes three shots to kill, or three charges like this. Um, the annoying part is he flies around the map. So like, see how he recovers straight away? If I met him in the middle, he'd kind of just like loiter for a few seconds. Just waiting for his uh, kids to spawn in so I can slap him around. There we go. Yeah, if you ever play this game as a kid, you'll probably definitely remember using the Fury mode, because I, I think I use that for most battles, or fights, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not a Pokemon, you know, <laughs> I don't have battles. So depending on uh, where the bat goes is ideal. Uh, the closer to that door you can see, the better. Um, because that way I can just go straight to it. If it spawns towards the back, it's just, you know, more time loss. There we go. Uh, I don't know where he was going just then. What am I stuck on? Hello? Well, this is awkward. So a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of Kong's levels, especially when killing enemies or the Venus, uh, the V-Rexes, someone's called a Venusaurus, which is uh, a Pokemon. A Pokemon in my mind now. Um, yeah, it's a lot of button mashing when it comes to killing the enemies. So this part here, we need to try to catch Anne, but at the same time kill the Velociraptors. But by just charging through them like I'm a uh, quarterback or a, you know, some sort of rugby player, just charge through them. A few times, which has happened to me before, is the Velociraptors can just jump in, um, oh, can just jump on your back and actually kill you. Which isn't ideal. A lot of these Kong levels end in, um, end in cutscenes like this. Which is kind of annoying, especially when you you can see your split uh, or your positive time slowly running away from you. But this is where uh, Harambe realizes that he's fallen in love with a woman, uh, a beautiful young woman who is almost looks like two pixels. But yeah, <laughs> if you guys think this looks like crap, um, definitely look up the uh, PS2 versions or the. GameCube versions, they are horrendous, but <laughs> I remember playing it as a kid, even like um, like Mario 64 and stuff, that stuff looked real life to me, like literally looked like how I am right now, like that's how I kind of felt, I think any old school game, even if it's you know 8-bit and stuff, it, it just felt real, I think that's, you know, we kind of forget about that, especially playing uh, this stuff, so the, the spear was important there because we have to grab um, one of those uh, huge dragonflies to then uh, deter the bats from killing us. So they, that's going to come up a few times now. Uh, ideally, the bats pushing you would be the speed boost be helpful, but if you... I don't know, it sometimes happens and sometimes doesn't happen for me. So, like Grabbing a spear or a bone fragment, bone shard is also really important because you need to You'll see in a sec, you can see a fire there, which you have to, you got to obviously uh, poke your spear into it and then throw it somewhere. But if you don't have a spear, you have to like kind of detour slightly. There's another little, uh, little cool trick that um, was kind of found recently. If you kind of just hug these weeds here, you they just push you along. And it's a lot faster then because you can see how slow you walk in water. There's a lot of level, uh, water-based levels. 
which I'm not a fan of. Anytime you gotta like trek through water like this, especially trek and then uh, protect your your NPCs, it's just they're not fun. So what we'd have to do if you didn't carry a spear shard or a bone fragment, you'd have to run over here, then run back there to then ignite this fire. So. Just wait for this to burn down because it's gone from the back. There we go. What can happen is if that. Uh, oh, it happened now. So sometimes if you go through that too quickly, what will happen is. it. Can't, I think it tries to catch up. And it happens in another level towards the end of the game. Where we are. Actually, let's see if we can do this. I miss crap. Hello. There we go. But yeah, so we have to do it again later as well. But this part was like horrendous when I was a kid. It was so hard. Oh god, no. Please don't kill me, son. So this is why the sniper rifle is the best gun in the game. Because shooting those barriers, like I said earlier, uh, is three hits when you don't want to bash it with a spear or something. But with the sniper, it's only one shot. Uh, with the shotguns, one shot too, but... The sniper obviously has range in comparison to a shotgun spread. Uh, so we need to grab a spear here. Fend this guy away. Fend that bloke away. Just keep running. Uh, get these fish things here. I don't know what these are. I was going to call them axle. Oh my god. Well, that's never happened before. Well, this is awkward. So I'm going to bait those spiders. A centipede wheel run right on the bush. Not bush. What is that? A thing? What is that? A plank? And yeah, so next level, millipedes. So there's a skip on this part, which I'm convinced doesn't work on the uh, 360 version of this game, which I'll explain it coming up. So this is just another part where you are, uh, where you babysit. So I've got to focus on this area here where centipedes could come out. Because um, Hayes has a shotgun, which will kill them all. But if I let them get too close to him, they will attack him, and then you have to wet... Uh, wet. You have to let uh, Jack Black drag Hayes through, which obviously just loses yourself time. I need to reload. Just waiting for this way, Hayes. There we go. Cool. So this is another uh, instance where I'll... Uh... Oh, see? Well, oh, this is awkward. I think I'm playing the game too fast for my own good. Yeah, so <laughs> ideally, uh, that wouldn't happen in a perfect speedrunning world. So there's yeah, another part where I kill, I just grab a, a widgety grub or what the hell that thing is, and just run ahead while they're distracted. So this part here, which doesn't work on this version, I don't think. Well, I just can't ever get, get it to work, where you can just run ahead here. But... Here I have to kill all the the crabs that come out. This is the last level you'll you'll see the crabs on. I don't know if it's uh, anyone's favorite enemy, but I don't know why they would be. Am I dead? But yeah, so this is like the last time you'll see crabs. Oh crap! Die. Just waiting. So this next part, and I'll explain it. I guess a bit closer, but I can explain it now while I'm trying to kill these crabs. So I have to do another take fire into the next level, uh, where you're not meant to. I do have a a backup fire strat if I can get through. If I can't, but I've kind of nailed it now. Like I've I put it down to a science. Oh, so uh, I gotta throw that there, shoot that. Oh, that was. Oh, please don't hurt me, I'm just a small child. Cool. So this part is one of the harder parts of the game where you need to uh, maintain fire. And like I said earlier, if this fire's not in your hand, you can... Uh, it will like just despawn, essentially. So you just gotta keep on top of it. So this kind of, it's kind of hard. It's, I've only got one bullet and backup. If Hayes 
There might be another centipede behind him. So trying to maintain... Oh my god. Trying to maintain fire here is really hard because if you can't uh, kill the centipedes with what you got, then it's just it turns out to be a horrible time. So this is our another fire skip. So you got two fire skips here back to back. I'm just trying to listen for the thing to click. There we go. So as before, we just spam trigger into this next part. And onto Brontosaurus, which is about a eight to nine minute level, but doing this trick here, uh, just you skip the whole level. This is about a, you turn a, well, stuff's happening that I've never seen before. <laughs> oh my god. So what I was meant to do is throw the spear over this to land on the far side, so by the time I get here, it's like halfway burnt, so. Marathon luck, eh? Crazy stuff. Oh. Uh, how's that incentive going, by the way? Well, we just recently had a $40 donation from Loxus who says, Save Kong, please. Which puts save into the lead by $10 at $220. Nice. And kill just trailing behind at $210. Exclamation mark, donate if you want to get in there. Exclamation mark, incentives if you want to see the incentives coming up. Get cool. in. But no, I'm, I'm definitely, yeah, like I said, a hundred times now, save save my boy Kong. I think he, uh, he deserves a, a fairy tale ending, which he doesn't get in the film. I don't think he, I don't think any of the movies he doesn't get. I think King Kong's been, what, remade like three or four times now? And they've, what, again, now introduced him into the uh, the universal monster universe, whatever the hell it's called. There's too many, too many universes now. Because I think, you can thank Marvel for that. But I'm, to be honest, I was really, really hyped for uh, Kong vs. Godzilla. Like, weirdly. So here's a uh, another level that's notorious for soft locking and ruining runs. Uh, kill this guy. Where's his kids? Oh yeah, this sniper's the best gun. Yeah, so this actually happened the other day when I was practicing. Uh, what can happen is, so this is Jimmy, by the way. Uh, if you've ever seen the film, he's a bit annoying. Uh, played by Jamie Bell. But what can happen here is, uh, so t actually, so two circumstances where this can soft lock. Uh, either circumstance A, Jimmy doesn't jump on the raft and will just stand there and stare at you romantically, even though we're just friends. Um, or uh, A, or B, sorry. Uh, Hayes will just shoot at invisible things in this uh, next section. Oh yeah, up there. There we go. Nice. This, oh, it's gonna happen? So, he's literally soft lock, so... But these guys ran ahead. Bizarre. So he might just drop dead and I have to redo that section, which is, it's fine. You know, I'll live. There we go. So I call that being killed by ghosts. Which happens more than it should. <laughs> it's really annoying. So this is actually, so back on Hayes uh, killing stuff, this is one of those levels where you'll see him shoot stuff and it may kill him or it may not kill him. Let's see how we go. But I think I just saw him kill one of the dinosaurs. I think when it comes to Jimmy, because him and Jimmy are like boys. It's like Master and Apprentice. Uh, you know, like Obi-Wan and Anakin sort of thing. Yeah, so sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. Later on, he's Hayes is completely useless. I'm watching you, guy. Yeah, cool. There we go. So that, uh, the... The part where Jimmy doesn't go into the raft is something I've only kind of experienced within recent memory. Either uh, I haven't, <laughs> I hadn't been playing the game fast enough up to that point, or I think I feel like this game gets jankier the more I play it. 
Like, it's an old game. I might just be wearing the disc out. I don't know what I'm doing. So this is another part where we just got to wait for everyone to come in because if we get too far ahead, they won't run into this room. And I have to wait for the doors to close. Take my take a sip of my uh, non-disclosed blue drink. So everywhere we go, Jack Black uh, will always be the first person in the room. He doesn't really care about anyone else. Just waiting for Hayes to come in. There he is. Since he walks in the door, he will slam shut. Bang. And then we try to meet the tiny dinosaurs, which I don't think have a name uh, at the door. So in a perfect world, I can kill all these guys before they even get past me. Let's see how we go with that. And then a big one. I actually don't know if these are meant to be like the mini versions of Velociraptors or what. But now a Velociraptor will spawn. Pop in the head a few times. Cool. Cool. So this is another part where uh, Hayes will softlock. So there is, see the enemies up there? Sometimes he just gets stuck shooting at him. So up until recently, this was another point where uh, this was probably my worst level for soft locking, if I'm being honest. Because um, sometimes I could probably just get this spear. I think I would have hit it. So there should be a log here. Cool. So I got it. Um, what the hell was that? So there is like spear RNG. Oh, oh, I caught that one. So there's like spear RNG where it doesn't always go where you throw it. Oh, cool. How can they run through but not me? What the hell? But what happens here if you don't burn the grass but, uh, when running across it, Jack Black will just stand on the other side and just uh, stare at you. And then he'll, he'll literally just stand there like looking at you. Like you've, you know, dogged him even though he can just easily just run across here. So this is a... Uh, one of the, it's kind of like an auto scroll. There's two back to back. One's kind of annoying, which you'll really see the uh, the RNG of the spears, which are extremely annoying, I might add. So, I can show in a like an instance later. But even though I'm aiming in the same spot, you can just see some of them dipping and dip up. There's no consistency to them. So sometimes in do or die situations, you will uh. See me miss point blank shots because the spear, um, just, like flew behind me. It's, it'd be like that. I don't know if you ever seen that meme where it's like uh, teammates in COD and like the other teams like uh, X no, SAS soldiers and your teams like holding the guns backwards and you're sticking the guns in their mouth and stuff. It's literally that meme. I don't know why. Cool. So fire uh, fire spears are unlimited in this part because your fire here always burns and. Anytime there's a pile of bones like this, it's unlimited. Uh, that, that perfect example of the uh, stuff not going where I aimed it. So this is another... A really good example here where I'll throw stuff and you'll just see it absolutely fall short for no reason whatsoever. So what happens here is you got to burn all the bushes so the uh, islanders... Essentially, because you're trying to kill the islanders to protect yourself. Even though you're in, you know, their territory. But you might see here, one of my spears... Pretty much that one. That would, like, land perfectly in the bush. But yet... Uh, the game's just like, yeah, nah, that's not happening today. So they pretty much just landed in the same spot. Yet, one killed... Or one activated the fire and the other one didn't. Oh, that was Jimmy. It scared the hell out of me. Put one of the uh, centipedes was in my face. What's he killing? No. Oh. See, this is uh, another... Yeah, so that just ricocheted for no reason. I always put it down to my aiming, but... I'm not that bad. There we go. So I've actually died here before. Because if you don't burn the bushes or your spears just decide not to burn stuff... Now uh, these guys will, like, three-hit combo you. Like, I have that... I've... Yeah. Lost uh, runs in the past because they all just want to throw at the same time and you get a like whoop de wop but it doesn't, you know, connect. So. Die. 
Also, I didn't mention before, I, I have to grab the pistol in this section of the in, uh, of the level in comparison to the having the sniper rifle. Sniper rifle is more powerful, probably the better gun, but the the pistol has more ammo, which is really important for the next part. And you, it's a faster reload, which is also really important for the next part, and you'll see why. But it's a kind of cool trick in the next part, which it doesn't really affect the run overall, but uh, does make stuff slightly easier. Whoa. Oh, he's spear caught on fire. That's kind of cool. But yeah, so auto scroll is uh, not the best. I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a fan of these. This is probably like one of my least favorite levels. Not my my worst favorite. The one, the next Jack level after this, or second one after this, is my least favorite. It's called the Swamps. Uh, if you ever watch me play this when I'm going for PB attempts, uh, I get really frustrated and angry and swear a lot because they just don't want to cooperate half the time. I think Jimmy's probably the worst culprit, and Hayes, uh, Jack Black's normally pretty good. Cool. I actually thought, oh my god. Yeah. So I don't know if there's a way to speed this part up. You kind of just like float along. But yeah. Someone just say swamp life in the chat. <laughs> swamp fella. But yeah, so I don't know if, I, if burning these bushes speeds the part up. But this, you kind of just like, I don't know if this is like ideal straight either. I try to kind of walk this front like far front as I can so I can hit like the, the border of the level. Ah, oh, got apart from so much talking. I don't think I've talked so much in my life. Probably have to be honest. So Rapids is I guess a fun level, but the checkpoints are ruthless. And that'd be a, a pretty common theme I guess in a speed game. But uh, a few times the T-Rex at the end, or V-Rex, has killed me, and it uh, literally takes me back to here. And this is about a four to five minute section. So this is an example of me turning uh, the V-Rex into a hedgehog, porcupine, echidna. That's a good one. So a, a regular spear would like, if I threw it at him, they'd kind of like st become stunned. Uh, but the bone shards, you have to uh, get a few into him for them to get stunned or stagnant. Oh yeah, so killing the uh, killing the bats is really good. That guy had a spear in him, but alright. So this part here is something I can only really do sometimes. So I can actually get the T-Rex to fall into the map. Now see if we can do it. But sometimes he does a U-bolt. Yeah. So it's no big deal, but what happens, he runs around to here. Which... He was kind of slowed down, which is handy. But sometimes he will, like, threaten to kill... Um, the other two on the other raft. Oh my god, I thought he was going to kill me. Just keep him back. I can throw spears faster if I didn't have a gun, but I don't want to shoot. Because I kind of need the ammo for the next level as well. So that's it for Rapids. Now you just, uh... Just kind of chill. So... I, guess, I don't know if it's a spoiler. <laughs> so this is the first, uh... The second Kong level and the first instance of... Uh, beating the crap out of these guys and here's a I don't know if it's a dumb oversight but if I spam the B button um, you can see my character saying it's okay I've got enough magazines I don't know why it's because in the cutscenes you kind of always like live I'm not really sure why so I can get a cutscene skip at the beginning of this level I just need to kill this V-Rex uh, fast enough Yeah, so this is the first level where we fight a V-Rex. If I can get him to just... Nah, I don't think I'm going to get it. There we go. 
Cool. Ah, uh, so... If I do it fast enough, you actually just skip that cutscene entirely. Which is, uh, really handy. But, you know, you can't win them all, because then you have this cutscene, so... It kind of, you know, how long they go for, like, three to four? Maybe five seconds at most, so... But... In a game where every second counts, I, think, I guess any speedrun, every second counts. Um, it's ideal to try to shave as much time as you can. I know, like, there's some, you know, Mario games, probably like 64 and stuff, where the speedrun, the world record's probably no more, like, you know, got milliseconds separating first and second and third and fourth and stuff. Like, I guess fortunately that this isn't the case for this game. There's about... Uh, first place, the guy who has first place is absolutely cracked at this game. I think he discovered a majority of the skips and stuff. But, oh. So you can do a cool trick later on where, oh, so these are V-Rexes are ruthless. They just don't care about you getting up. I think it comes down to the, um, oh, I didn't know you could do that, cool. Cool, so they both went down at the same time, which is really good. Oh, no, it didn't. He just got stunned. Well, this is a horrible segment. So what can happen here is if I don't stun them both, the other one can charge me and kill me. Uh, not kill me, but, like, stun me while I'm trying to, you know, uh, hurt his wife or whatever the hell I'm trying to do. So there is a... A strat later on. This is probably like one of the last times you'll see me uh, do the animation on the V-Rexes. Because later on you just throw them off the edge to, to skip that. So there's another circumstance where the Kong uh, missions end with a cutscene like this. Which is kind of feel like they drag on. But anyway. So... <laughs> Swamps. I hate this level with a passion. This is where my good runs come to die, pretty much. Because of... So, Hayes just killed that, which I don't see very often, which might, like, uh, make life easier coming into um, actually surviving this part. Nope, missed. So what I need to try to do is kill these dudes... So they, so the other crocodiles or swamp swamp monsters will just neglect me, um, which is good. But they seem to devour things really quickly. Oh god damn it! I wish my <laughs> my uh, my spears would go straight. Oh my god! I can. Hello. I swear I'm not bad at this game. Having them stunned in water though is probably ideal because they don't... How the hell? There we go. God damn. Yeah, having them stunned in water is probably the best because they don't uh, lay down and don't go through the whole help me I'm, I'm injured animation. All that, uh... In Family Guy, when Peter trips on a, the curb and holds his knee. So I kind of need them to keep up with me. Melly's just so I can... Who's dying? Hello. See what I mean? He just takes... That's why I hate this level. So much backtracking. But then no one wants to help me. How did Jack Black get there so quick? Grab a spear, my guy. Help, help a brother out. Jesus. But see now, Jack Black's backtracking, which isn't, which isn't good. And Jimmy's just walking into nothing. You really are, <laughs> really seeing how broken this game is. So I might have to take an, uh, an intentional death. Let's we'll see how we go. So this next part here, uh, I gotta burn the bush. And what I'm actually meant to do is wait up here while uh, I escort the other guys across. 
But if I do it fast enough, and kill enough bats, I can actually just go across it without them needing to help me at all. Old mate here is going just straight for me though. Please don't kill me, him's a small boy. So because Hayes got injured, I don't know how far along he is. But this is definitely one of my best swamps. And I'm pretty sure I just saw someone in chat quote Shrek. But that's... I'd rather not be in the swamp, you know. Oh, God. Oh, I didn't know you could even do that. I'm learning something new every day. I mostly just spam the, uh, the X button when I'm up at these parts. And sometimes cool here as well. If you have, like, bats attached to your back, you can, like, suplex them off. I don't know where my, uh, my log went. But we'll do a uh, little Harambe dance. So these parts are notorious for uh, the game still being live when cutscenes happen. So a few times they've actually come, even died or become close to death because the enemies don't stop attacking you even though there's a cutscene playing. Not very nice of them, I know. Not very cash money, but... I just, it's, it's just the perks of playing an old game, I guess. Cool. Put time that perfectly. Smooth, baby. I forgot to do my strat. Cool. Alright, let's wait for Anne to come. Sometimes you be careful because if you hit B too early, you have to go through the whole grabbing animation, even though there's no one or nothing to grab. Which, you know, <laughs> slows stuff down. So this is my my least favorite section in this level, mainly because so what you have to do here is place Anne down, uh, bust through this. She grabs a spear, lights a a uh, spear on fire, as you can see. But then she just gets overwhelmed by enemies, and it's next to impossible to pick her up. Oh my god, I did it. It's next to impossible to pick her up when she's just getting absolutely slaughtered by these, uh, just everything. Oh, seven suplex. There we go. Bang. And this is, it's just so annoying. Like, the Velociraptors are the worst and the bats because you can pick them up, as you just like, you see? So sometimes you can yeah, pick them up by accident and they just, it doesn't necessarily slow stuff down. It's more annoying than anything else. Just trying to charge. I can probably climb this now. Oh, damn it. Oh, crap. So this is just an instance where you just have to spam A and you'll throw them off. So that's obviously not ideal. So right now, we have back-to-back cutscenes where I will land, move like an inch, and then another cutscene plays. I don't know why they could have just played this all in one one motion, but so I don't know. Sometimes he does the evade thing when you're trying to spam X. So what I'm going to try to do here is to try to lure the the V Rex away. And get him to go over the edge. Nah, oh well. Because regardless if... If I just leave him on the floor and try to bust through that barrier... Um, he'll just... He gets up instantly. And then will charge me. Also, you see that uh, Anne has some sort of uh, supercharged spear. Because the knockback on that thing is crazy when she hits the T-Rex. So if I can get here, um, I guess within a minute, uh, an hour 18, hour 19, I'm making good time. I think in my PB I got here in like roughly an hour 10. So to post a competitive time, you have to get here within like an hour 20. So so this is a, a pretty infamous level. This is the most run level we have. Um, it's, it was a real competitive level. I actually hold the world record in this level. 
uh, pretty proud to say my parents are really impressed. They've actually put a picture up of my uh, word record in their living room. I've never seen him hold the spear as he falls down before. It's interesting. But what can happen here is you can get stuck in a swimming animation where I'll have to save and reset. Because <laughs> it's not ideal. See if it happens. Not cool, I got up. So if you sometimes you'll stay uh like laid down and then you'll just be doing this animation and because it thinks you've landed in water and it just you know takes your takes your time. So you can actually probably play the level like this normally. And it could be faster than resetting. I've never tested it. So this is the part where you kind of figure out that uh, Carl slash Jack Black is uh, not, not a very good bloke. Uh, catch. So he just like realizes that it's all about his movie team. Like, and getting kidnapped is, means nothing to him. Uh, can these guys fall over? That'd be fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, so the, the, he's, he, all he cares about is the money and fame. Um, this rarely happens. In a perfect world, she would just... Can you come out, please? I can't get behind here. Go away. So in a perfect world, she'd kind of run out as soon as I busted down the gate here. But she doesn't do that. And I hate her for it sometimes. It's always like... I always like tend to notice with these sort of speed games that... It's every time you're making like really good pace that you just never get the RNG you want. But then when you're, you know, 10, 20 minutes off PB or whatever it is, you seem to get the best RNG that, you know, money can buy. I need my log. So now I just pretty much spam A uh, until one of the bats attacks Ann. And I kind of stand here and spam A because you can see the uh, Skull Islanders torches. So what will happen is a bat will attack Anne. Uh, she can kill it by herself normally, but to speed up the process, we kill it for her. Um, a few times I have missed, and I have to have to sit here uh, staring at her while she pokes a bat to death. Which, you know, it's kind of annoying, but... Yeah, sweeping up the mess. Oh, so, so this games are pretty good for not eating inputs, but if you don't do them in like a in succession properly, it will uh, possibly eat inputs. So this level is coming towards an end. Just have to climb across a few walls. I I'm not sure how the uh, Skull Islanders seem to uh, make platforms on side of mountains it's never really explained I'm, I'm pretty sure there's law somewhere but i'm not gonna read that i don't think anyone's gonna read that i guess if you watch the og movies it might explain it there so this is uh to save Anne, which is another level that oh my God. i kind of hate <laughs> Because running around, it's more like dancing with the uh, the V Rex while he attempts to eat sweet old Anne here. Uh, it's kind of annoying, and because it kind of feels like she takes like nine years to open a door, which I hate. So what are we doing? I don't know if I mentioned this before, but <laughs> it's probably a bit late. Diagonal movement's like the optimal movement in this game. Was kind of discovered beginning of this year, I think purely just from uh, play testing. Now the the top two runners of this game, uh, a guy called Monka Monk and Yuko Harmonics, they have found majority of the skips, and uh, I pretty much just learnt it from uh, reading about it. Did he? Oh, cool. Uh, pretty much like pretty much how I learned this run is just by watching them. Um, play the game and we have a forum on our speedrun.com page which is a list of what to do in each level so 
if you guys are interested in running this game, we have a couple like save column category, which is 100%, uh, any percent, which is the one we're running now. Uh, what else we got? Glitchless. We've got uh, a spear only category as well, which I'm actually looking at running probably next because I'd be interested to see how that goes. But I know the first level we played, you actually don't have ex uh, access to spears until you get to the where the big crab was, if you saw that part. Oh. No, thank you. Oh, my favorite part here, she tells you to shoot at it. I actually think you might have missed that. Of course, he has a bit of temper tantrum. Just starts bashing stuff down. Because he can, not because he should. Wow. How, uh, how are those incentives going, by the way? Have we made any progress on them? Uh, we're still looking pretty good for saving Kong. That's at $220 and kill is at $210. Damn. Just remember incentives.ozspeedruns.com if you want to see the incentives list and donate.ozspeedruns.com or exclamation mark donate in the chat if you would like to join in and donate some money to kill cancer. Cool. I think everyone should remember as well that uh, it's going towards a good cause. So it's all about curing cancer, kicking cancer in the bum. Uh, I'm kind of fortunate enough to not have any loved ones to suffer from cancer, but uh, it's not about that. It's about, you know, curing the disease. It, you know, ruins more many lives. So definitely uh, get behind that and support it. Do I have a spare spear here? Yeah, cool. Oh, cool. I just nabbed the same one out of his face. Hopefully she's done. Yeah, cool. I normally uh, time that part based on how many walls he knocks down, or how many tantrums he has. And that this is another circumstance, or another instant, where if I was to die there a few times, the game would make it easier for myself and slow down, uh, lessen the time it takes for Anne to open the door. So obviously like the, uh, I think Spyro game you mentioned earlier, Spyro 3? Um, yep. Yeah. So yeah, the obviously game gets easier the more you die. Because it, it has like a, I guess there's no uh, difficulty option, it just has a set difficulty. And also another thing I forgot to mention earlier as well, that this game was kind of, I guess innovative for its time where uh, you regenerate health instead of having to find um, a health pack. I think, um, at the time it was really uncommon for to happen because even like playing Halo and stuff as a kid, you had to have a, um, you got a health, as much as you had an overshield, you still had a health pack that you had to pick up. And same, I'm not sure about Halo 2, but there are any games I can really remember that may or may not have had it, so. Yeah, kind of innovative for its time, which is always interesting. But it is a, it's, it's this game produced by, uh, by Ubisoft, which... Uh, it's another uh, instance where having a set difficulty is... It's pretty common with most uh, Ubisoft games. I think Assassin's Creed, you don't get to pick a difficulty. Um, I think the Far Cry games, you do... I think... In the, I know in like 3 and 4 you pick a difficulty. But, um... Yeah, the earlier ones I don't think you do. It's kind of just set for you. But even like all the, all the Mario games have like a set difficulty. So this is a, a level I was talking about where you don't do anything. Um, <laughs> they must have had to hit a quota. And instead of having that on the back half of uh, the save and they've just made it its own standalone level. Which I'm not really sure. But I guess, if, like I said, if you've got quotas to meet, you have to do that sort of stuff. But how did I miss that? Hello? So this is the only time we intentionally pick up a shotgun. And what you can do here is, if you shoot them close enough to this ledge here, they can actually get enough height where they will die from fall damage. Now I've got to be careful in this part here, because sometimes if I get too, go too far towards one, the other one will ignore me and kill uh, my NPC counterparts. Which they can't handle these... Uh, uh, what's it called Velociraptors very well. So these guys are three shots with a shotgun at at least close range. Where'd he go? Where's he going? Hello. 
Dang. So uh, I think we're having a bit of a war right now with uh, Save or Kill Kong. Oh. Uh, we've just had a few donations just roll through here. We had ten dollars from uh, Kaczynski who says Save Kong. Ten dollars from Cmox who says Save, 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 Mr. Kong. Nice. Ten dollars from uh, McBimbus who says Please save my box, of Monkey Boy. Twenty dollars from Anonymous who says Delete the monk, please. $20 again from Anonymous saying, oh, fine, I guess we need another more Monkus to lead us. So that <laughs> puts us at a tie. No way. $250 each. That's crazy. You guys are insane. So make sure to donate. If you want to either save or kill Kong, chuck it in those donation comments. I want to see a war break out. Let's go for it, eh? It's important that we save him, in my opinion. <laughs> But that's just me, little old me. I always like. I guess this game was kind of cool that it had the alternative ending. You do like kind of. I, it's one of those characters you're not really meant to root for, but you are meant to root for. Cool. So this was the this is the first introduction of the, um, the baby. Uh, v Rexes, but. You guys might notice they get really lazy where they just use the the Velociraptor uh, sound. Oh, cool. So you might hear it in a sec. It's kind of hard because they're both here right now. Oh my god, I'm on the verge of death. Cool. Sweet as. So this is another part <laughs> where if I see if it happens, sometimes once I walk past this waterfall here, a ghost will kill Jimmy. Um, but here we go. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. Cool. So this uh, coming up is one of the last fire skips of the game from memory. Uh, what I need to try to do here is burn these Velociraptors alive. Sounds horrible, I know, but... There we go. There we go, cool. So sometimes what happens, and it's really bad... Oh, crap. That the... As much as you might not look like you're in the fire, you might be in it by like a pixel, and it decides to damage you. So there's a one of the last levels towards the end of the game where it's uh, really bad, and it's uh, definitely do or die at that point. I think I stuffed that up. So this part here, you just crouch, uh, spam the button, and you skip past the waterfall. If you don't do that, uh, there is a section... Uh, down there that you have to go get the fire from. It's full of crabs. Oh, actually, so I lie. So this isn't the last level you see crabs, but it might as well be. Oh, the other one wasn't the last level. I don't know what Hayes is doing. I need his gun, though. Cool. So this part, now we just wait for Anne and Jimmy to open the door for us. But trying to get too close to the fire. And sometimes you'll probably notice that it kind of skips dialogue. Because you're not meant to be, uh, I guess, at this point, this early in the level. So the mud's a, a level where you have to do a death skip. Uh, let's see if I can do it. I don't know if I mentioned before, but this game's pretty much like a babysit simulator. Thank you. Where's Anne? She's getting mauled. Cool, so I just need to run, a, uh, run ahead here. So what's meant to happen, and which I completely forgot about until I played this 100% the other day, is you're meant to just wait there and then escort them through the water and just jump off, but I'm just going to skip that. Right, stuff that. Don't have time for this. So what happens here is I run ahead. You'll probably hear them yelling Jack in a second. If you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll probably just see Jack with like a thousand A's. Or I need to just wait for a that to sweep me. See. 
Who's gonna die first, me or Hayes? Me, crazy. So this part here, obviously, I think that's a might be the last intentional death skip. I kind of lose track. I've kind of just like muscle memory at this point. I can't remember what to do where. I kind of do, but it's just second nature to me now. So I need to try to kill this bat before he even land, like can even like be a threat. But then I just have to kill his kids or her kids. I don't discriminate. No, oh, but I do shoot the air randomly though. Oh, there you are. He's walking to a wall. Cool. Perfect. So I'm going to this next level with uh, with a really good amount of ammo. It, it helps when you swap uh, weapons with haze. Because I think it gives it additional ammo in compared to what it's meant to have. So yeah, if I let haze pick up the shotgun, it probably have a lot more ammo than what I would get out of it. But there's no point doing that. It's just not it's just not the optimal strat. I always forget what the dinosaurs are. Dinosaurs. What are they? Alligators? Crocodiles? Oh no. It's funny how the pistol can kill those things in two shots. But a, a sniper rifle just seems to tickle them. I missed. At least, at least it didn't drag me underwater. Be dead. Oh, I knew that was gonna happen. Where do you go? God damn. Cool. So we're about maybe like three quarters of the way through the game. So. Uh, if yeah, you want to get incentives in uh, for save or kill Kong, definitely get them soon because we'll be closing that soonish. So I'll let you guys know when it is closed. Oh, good. Do you want to quick update on that one as well? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, we've got twenty dollars from Yart saying Razy Kong is save Kong. Ten dollars from McBeambus who says Kong shall live if my COVID disaster payment has anything to say about it. <laughs> and another ten dollars from Kaziski who says save my boy Kong. Look, if anyone wants to kill Kong right now, you've got forty dollars to tie it and forty-one dollars before Kill Kong is in the lead. If you want to keep saving Kong, you can throw more money and you can make that distance just grow and grow and grow. I I definitely didn't think we'd be saving Kong today, if I'm being honest with you. I thought uh I thought uh Kill Kong was gonna win purely based on that person, uh that one generous donator dropping two hundred bucks, so I'm definitely uh, happy that Save Kong has come through on the superior. Where am I going? So something I missed just quickly. Um, so I ran too far ahead where the V-Rex didn't spawn. Which I haven't had happen for a really long time. Because it's... You know, as much as a speed game, you kind of need to keep up with the NPCs. Because I think all of the time they're the triggers. So... Yeah, I could have got to where I am now and probably soft locked myself based on not waiting for him to spawn. Cool. So this is one of the one of the sad levels in the game. Um, not really. I get, it depends. So this is a point in the game where, um, spoiler it, Hayes dies here, but in the actual film, Hayes died um, on the log. So he gets to survive a a bit longer up here. And there was a nev another character called Preston who in the film doesn't die but died when we first met the V-Rex. So I don't know why they did that. Unless because I know how like um, these movie tie-in games work is like I think because they got a release in succession or very close to each other where I think the studio will send the game studio a rough script of the game and they will write a game around the script but you know stuff can change within post-production so originally Preston could have died in the game uh, so <clears throat> in the film but so hence why he dies in the game but then they could have they've gone and back flipped on the on the idea which then makes you know uh, continuity errors within the game and film 
So this is a another another. Also, at some point, Anne lost her coat, but I don't know why you'd wear a nighty underneath your uh, underneath your coat. Bizarre. Maybe it's like a 1933 thing. I'm not too sure. I was born in 96, so I'm a bit out of it, you know, a bit behind. So this is a, a pretty easy uh, level. You just kind of, kind of, just get the V-Rex to walk towards you and then kill a few bats, which he will then go and devour. But then you got to keep um, an eye on Anne because uh, bats will try and attack her as well. As you can see, one trying to spawn in now. There we go, got him. But killing them isn't always the best because if they land right in front of her, the V-Rex would just be uh, lured towards her. Did she just like snipe that, that bat? Crazy. Cool. I need you. So that's a... <laughs> So there's a bit of continuity error in this part as well, where you'll see in a second, Hayes has a has a Thompson, and at no point would have he picked up a Thompson, because I don't think that's even an option after um, from the levels we played previously, where he could have picked up guns. But I think they were just trying to line that up with the film, because I believe when he dies, he's carrying a Thompson. So it's one of those things you don't want to dive into it too much. But at the same time, it's an it's an obvious goof. And uh, rest in peace, Hayes. Well, I've never done that before. You can walk in the thing. So here's something you can do, and I only discovered this like the other day. Is if I, oh, I didn't do it. So if I. Wait, why did I pick Anne up? Hello? Now I'm just getting absolutely destroyed by the V-Rex. I'm still holding Anne. Put her down, damn. So I actually need to get him closer to here. So when I... So for when I do this... What I'm going to do is this pillar right behind me, I'm going to start it. Because the cutscene will play and I'm able to throw the pillar while the cutscene's playing. And then, I think I can bash with the door? No, it's lined up wrong. So this level's kind of cool that in the, there's a lot of, um, they kind of cram a lot of enemies, uh, a lot of boss enemies into this level. I just gotta wait for these guys to attack me. Because otherwise they'll kill me as I'm trying to climb up the thing. I think one's fine. Letting one survive is okay. It's not the end of the world. And you'll see a, a big Harambe jump in a second. This is, I don't know why they added this part. But it's like... Me and my, uh, me and my girlfriend always have a giggle about it when it happens. You'll see it in a sec. Ready? Just slow motion for no reason. I know it's meant to be like, you know, epic and stuff, but <laughs> it's kind of pointless. Okay, so this next part coming up, there is two big blue bats. And sometimes if you're slow enough, what you can do is, when you swing on that log, you can kick one of the bats. Cool. So, if we don't kill that bat then, uh, we'll have to fight it like this but luckily unlike the first time we versed the big blue bat as kong he just will attack you as many times as he wants uh instead of you having to wait for him to send his kids in to finish the job and that sort of stuff but it is important here that i do kill all of them because what can happen is when i'm trying to open the door here uh, one can just randomly attack me and then prevent me from opening the door. Cool. Bang. Pick up Anne. So this next part up here is really... I made me feel like 
like a badass when I was a kid. Um, let's just put it that way. So there's it, three or four, three V Rexes coming up, um, and you gotta try to fight all of them in succession. Uh, w well, within uh, reasonable succession. So gotta flip around. So th that's an oversight in the game. You're actually meant to jump off to the right hand side and then climb up a wall, swing on that, but you can just jump straight to it. So what I can do here, so as I tried before, if I, cool, just throw them off the edge. So that saves me from doing a whole animation. I need to try to lure this V-Rex over here. But what happens is I, they uh, don't fight fair. This is kind of what I want them to be honest, because I can just throw them off in succession. As long as they let me. Perfect, that was awesome. That was probably the fastest I've done that. And now we just leave Anne to uh, sit on the tree. So what happens there is every time you kill one of the uh, the dinosaurs, uh, the, the V-Rexes, you go through this whole animation. And the last animation goes for like you get, does this like almighty roar, and that goes for about thirty to forty seconds. Uh, but by just throwing the V-Rexes off the edge like that, you skip the about one minute to, you know, one minute ten of animations. Jimmy, stay covered, they're here. So this is, uh, To The Plane. Another heavy RNG field level. Hopefully it's one of the last RNG levels I have to deal with. Because what can happen here is Jimmy will hide behind a pillar and will just stay there. Or, which happened, be uh, happened to me before, he sits on top of the building somehow and is scared of heights and won't come down. So let's uh, hope that doesn't happen. And this is another part where I need to kind of just watch him, otherwise uh, a ghost will kill him. I don't know why. So if you get past here and he's not like right behind you, uh, he'll just drop dead for no reason. Oh, I sniped him. Nice. Well, so I mentioned before, but the spears can like break the doors in like one shot. I can never remember how to do this part properly, but the way I do it doesn't seem to be horrible, you know. Oh, dead. Cool. Uh, if anyone's got questions about the game in chat, uh, feel free to ask and I'll get uh, clock to read them out for me. Hello? That's not happened before. So I need to flit around here because this is one of the checkpoints. Or just not. <laughs> cool, so let's uh... Why can I not pick up a spear? We uh, actually do have a chat question here from McBimbus. <laughs> do you genuinely like this game? It's okay if you do. I, I love this game. I think it's... It's more of like nostalgia, I think, than anything else. Because like I, I mentioned at the beginning of the run, it's one of the only games that I... Uh, an only FPS game I owned on the uh, PlayStation 2. Because uh, my parents were pretty like, no, nah, you can't... You can only play, you know, Nintendo, because Nintendo is pretty safe. Oh, could you not? That'd be fantastic. But I think the more I, uh... The more I play it, the more broken I realise it really is. I don't know what Jimmy's doing down there. So that could have softlocked then... If... That the uh, Ventosaurus flicked him into this pit here. So I don't know where he's actually going. Jimmy, you all right? If I do that, hopefully he gets his attention. If not, I might just have to... There he's coming. But yeah, I, I, I generally enjoy this game. Jimmy, what are you doing, mate? Everything all right, Jimmy? I'm too far, Jack! Come on. Hello? Jimmy, you alright? 
So what I might have to do here is save and quit. Because what can happen is if I don't save before I quit, um, the game might actually might not save like at all. Speaking of saves, uh, does the game auto save at the start of every level, or does softlocks mean full game resets? Uh, so just the levels. So like then, because it that was essentially a soft lock because he wouldn't walk towards the plane. Um, I just have to restart from a checkpoint. Uh, sometimes if I certain levels, if I'm too far and skip checkpoints, then I'll have to restart the whole level. So it depends on the level. Cool. So there's a level coming up uh, kind of soon, which I think I mentioned to you when we were talking before clock that I was on pretty much world record pace until um, I died and it reverted me back to the start of the level. So that's this level after this one actually. So it's okay. I got now, let's try to kill these guys before they attack me. I think what happened just before is um, because Jimmy got attacked by the the Velociraptor that's what kind of soft locked it. Oh cool. Which I don't actually think Anglehorn said the Jack Jimmy part before either. Is he gonna come? There you go. What I do sometimes, which doesn't help, is I'll interact with him while he's coming. Um, which then will make him like do a U turn, stand in that ledge there, tell me he's too far, and yeah. Cool. So, I think so far the game's been pretty pretty generous when it comes to soft locking. But I think as far as the game's concerned, that's probably the last place that will soft lock, thankfully. Now we just wait for him to fly away and for the level to fade out. Perfect. So to the lair. So yeah, so this was a level the other day where I was on, I was on world record pace and then, um, uh, stuffed up one of the skips and then because the checkpoints are so are so ruthless um, that was I lost like a whole four minutes pretty much and then I still uh, I end up getting PB by like two or I think it was one or two minutes but I could have gotten world record so it sucked at the time I was like really upset and I was during a um, my first attempt at 100% as well Bang. Because what happens here is there's a... You have to get a lever. But there's a... I think there's two baby V-Rexes, but only one spawns at a time, thank god. Um, because what happens here, if I don't get too close, I think... I'll pick up a spear here just so I can hopefully activate the checkpoint. But then I'm going to drop it just so I can get through here quicker. So in a perfect world, the V-Rex won't knock down the barrier. Because if he knocks this, it's just like cover for me. Cool. So he knocked it down, so that kind of sucks. Oh no. Um... I kind of just have to hang here because I can't be be getting damaged while I attempt this next part. But sometimes the this damage screen goes forever. Okay, see if I can do it. If not, I'm probably dead. Bang, nailed it. So I messed that up on my uh, world record attempt, and then the little V Rex just come over and ate me, and then reverted me back to the beginning of this level. Which at the time, yeah, like I said, sucks. I, you know, when like you stuff up and you like, you blame yourself and you hate yourself for it. That's literally where I was. <laughs> like I was not happy. But the fact that I can pull, um, pull it off live uh, during a showcase is always the best. The fact that I, I think I've I've hit every major skip pretty well, which can sometimes. Uh, 
So I get an itchy nose. Ugh. Because you know how you you always say you got a uh, curse like marathon luck. Bang. Cool. Let's go. So we're probably about 20 minutes out from finishing this run. So I'd probably get any last minute incentive donations in. Uh, looks like Save Kong is still in the lead by a whopping $40. Nice. That, that could turn with one single donation if yep. anyone pulls through last minute. Yep. Just remember exclamation mark incentives to see the incentives list we have. We also have one for a future run for Super Mario World, which is going to be pretty good. And uh, we also have the one that's currently running now. Exclamation mark donate if you would like to donate. And remember to specify the incentive you wanted to go towards in the comments. Yep. So for yeah, either save Kong or kill Kong, and obviously you don't have to uh, put money towards this run. You can put it towards any run you would like. So I'm gonna try to get as far ahead as I can of Anne, because a big, uh, big tapeworm-looking thing comes out of nowhere and attempts to eat her. And this is a another, I guess, another instance of lazy game design where the little tapeworm things just use the millipede sound effects. So these things here, you have to hit them six times and then you can grab them and kill them. I have lost count, so let's get a few in. Or, if you're close enough, you can just hit it out of bounds. So there's actually one trick I'm gonna try and do here. I've never, I've got it once by accident, which is how I discovered the trick. But if you stand here and spam, because this is where one of them spawned, you can actually knock it out of bounds, which uh, didn't happen, which sucks. But that one's been hit two times now. Three, maybe four. I'm trying to. It's confusing because they look identical, so it's hard to know which one I've, uh, which one I hit. So sometimes I just have to guess and then hope I've grabbed the right one. Nope. So they, uh, I guess they wiggle out of your hands if you don't pick the right ones. Surely you're now, right? Nope. Crazy. I probably haven't hit that one at all. Just really quickly about the uh, incentive. Uh, how far off are we from me from closing that off? Uh, maybe like ten minutes. Sick. And that's pretty much at the end of the run as well. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Cool. So this one I've. Let's see if I can get this. Oh god, he's gonna murder me. So I just need to hit this. Uh, where is he? Perfect. Cool. So after this, we got one more level where we kind of do nothing. It's a, a kind of like an auto scroll, but not really. We'll probably uh, we'll end the incentive on Kong's capture, which yeah isn't far off now. So the, a couple, the next couple of levels is like really quick levels. So just gotta wait for Anne to swim to the uh, to the raft. She takes her time. It's pretty annoying. And there's no way for me to speed this up at all. But like the other uh, level I played earlier, to uh. I think the raft was called. To activate the cutscene slightly quicker, the further I stand towards like the checkpoint of the uh, cutscene barrier, the quicker it will play. Which is always ideal. But yeah, not long now, guys, for to get our incentive, your last bit of incentive in for either save or kill Kong.
How are we on time, by the way? Do we have, like, enough time to get the... To save him in? Oh, we've got... We, yeah, we've got plenty of time right now. Currently sitting at 1.54. Cool. Because, yeah, sometimes with the, uh... With the alternative ending, uh... It can kind of, like... I guess glitch you out and you it'll never get to the part where you can save him. So may need a uh, one or two attempts on it to work. Cool. So this is a a skip where you just walk through the fire and uh, walk through the bush instead of burning uh, burning it, putting it on fire. I almost said burning it on fire. So these are uh, next levels are really quick. So you got, I think these are your, your last two uh, jack levels, and the rest are all Kong. I think it's a really funny part coming up, especially if we, we do save Kong. Uh, I'll point it out when we, if we get there. I don't want to jinx it. Sweet. So I need to get fire slightly early. Just to throw it so I can kill this thing while it burns. Uh, sometimes I'll throw it and uh, it won't kill. Uh, sorry, it won't burn. But this is an instance where I need to... Because I've been playing so well that this guy takes a bit longer to kill. That was heaps. Okay, I need to grab a spear because I need to take a spear into the next level. Cool, so coming up is probably the last trick of the game. Uh, it's a, a kind of an easy one, but it's kind of hard because based on... Uh, oh, that's never happened before. She died quick, holy crap. Which is fine. Uh, so based on how, like, where my character is uh, and the bush, I could just burn alive. Cool, made it through. Perfect. So besides, oh my god, besides say besides Anne dying, th that went really well. I might just have to wait for her then. So I did. So what I did is I like perfect. I actually don't know why she died there. I've never seen that before. Maybe because like she died before as well, um, or she just gets too keen and just wants to run through the fire. I don't know what's happening. We're gonna. There we go. I have to activate the, the fire. Get that. Oh, that's why. Look, she's just sitting in it. <laughs> what the hell? What is she doing? Because what she's meant to do is like, run into it, like get startled, and then yeah. Cool. I might just have to like block her. So she doesn't wander in. Where's she going? There she is. I never died so much on this level in my life. And such an easy part too. That's crazy. Marathon luck, eh? Let's be patient. Cool. Ow. Perfect. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't really perfect. This is the uh, the last jack level, so it's kind of like a an interactive do nothing level. Which, like I said earlier, I just guess it's the meet quotas. I guess. So you guys probably have one more level to get your incentive in to either save or kill Kong, and then it will be closed uh, after the next level for Kong's capture. So the world, uh, the world record for this game, the guy would have finished the game by now, and on a good run, uh, 
if you get here within like you know an hour 45 an hour 50 you're on really good pace i don't know what she's doing just hanging out i guess hello okay well, there we go you're actually meant to follow her not lead the way and it's just you bolt because there was a bridge here she actually might remember this level from the beginning of the game actually so most of the levels if we just ran through them we're at the beginning of the game So yeah, for the for the last Jack level, it's kind of uh, and it's not really interesting if I'm being honest. You think there'd be like some sort of like epic action scene, but this is how it ends. Are there any more questions that people have in the chat? Uh, not about the game, unfortunately. That's alright. Anything you can answer for people? Uh, not necessarily. People are just, you know, saying, Nicole, please, what are you doing? Work with the team here. That's right. Be, be, be a team player. Cool. Alright, so yeah, after this level, we'll, uh, we'll close the incentive. So as soon as it fades to, fades to black, we'll, we'll call it there. That guy was floating in the air. I don't know where you're going, Kong. Cooperate, my friend. We're always done, mate. Because there was one islander left on the top of the thing, he could have, uh, he could have hit me with a spear. And we do have a quick question in here uh, yeah. from someone in chat. Prophet, do you run any other games? Uh. Yes and no. I dabbled in uh, Resident Evil Village for a little bit, um, but then kind of just turned my intention solely to this game. I've done like, um, what's it called? I think Mario Odyssey has something called Nipple Percent, where it's trying to get the uh, board shorts for Mario as quick as you can. Um, that's like a, uh, like a, I think I did it in like 20 minutes, but the world record for it's like 13. So that was kind of like one of those uh, funny, stupid ones that I attempted. And then when uh, what's the game? Pokemon Unite came out, I tried to speedrun the tutorials, but uh, <laughs> I wasn't very good at it. So I think for the, those leaderboards, I'm on the bottom. I'm literally last place. But yeah, Resident Evil Village was a really fun game. I Over the weekend it came out, I just played the crap out of it. I, I think I played through it like seven times in one weekend. It was just... I. I never played a Resident Evil game, like, up until that point. But it was just, like, really fun for me. So, yeah, the incentives... You could probably close the incentive now. Because this is it. We've got about five, ten minutes left. Alright, well, it looks like we're saving Kong. <laughs> yes. But, hey, thank you, uh... Thank you, everyone, for choosing to save Kong. Uh, we get the happy ending. But I guess for uh, all the people who voted for Kill Kong, you kind of win as well. Because if you ever watch the movie, play the game, you know how it ends. So the Save Kong is a alternative ending. But no, thank you for everyone for donating. I really appreciate it. It's, you know, it's like I said a hundred times before. It's going to a really good cause. So it's not about saving Kong. It's, it's more about uh, trying to cure trying to find research for curing cancer so yeah thank you everyone appreciate it so that one was technically the last the jack level but you don't really do anything the last like three or four jack levels are kind of boring let's uh so if you have if you've seen the film uh this part takes place in a like a, on a, a broadway stage or in a in a cinema or something i can't really remember I think it would be a lot more fun to bust out of a, like a theater, but we just have to run around punching policemen with Thompsons. Cool. So the difference between New York and Skull Island is 
I don't know why you go that way every time, my friend. So you notice here coming up... Why am I going? What the hell is happening? Uh, the metal fences. So any other time I would have charged through those gates. The wooden ones in one shot. But here... Oh my god, I didn't know you could do that. That might be the new strat. So yeah, you normally have to hit them with two of these shoulder charges. The camera here gets like really... Really like screwy. So, bang. So I need to pick up one of these cars. Where's he going? Sometimes he has a mind of his own. I just don't know if I suck at the game or... <laughs> Might be a bit of both. Cool. So this is another instance where I, if I hold, like, st i got to change, like, the direction I'm running in. Because when it does these, like, camera angle skips, it, like, goes straight from where the camera is looking, if that makes sense. Cool. So this part coming up is really funny. So when he picks Anne up, if you look at his shadow, it's, uh, it just kind of flies away. <laughs> And I feel like this this angle here for the camera is like a poor choice because it's more in his mouth than his eyes. Like if it's like dead in his eyes, it'd make more sense. But who am I? I'm not a uh, game director. I don't know how to use computers. I'm computer illiterate. I actually have to get um, my girlfriend's brother to help me with computer stuff because that's how bad I am with computers. What are you doing, my guy? Cool. So this is it. So for all you, uh, for you, uh, uh, what am I gonna say? Kill Kong fanatics, you absolute animals. Uh, you get your wish, essentially. But I'm gonna, after this, hop into time machine, revert time, and save our boy Kong. So we're gonna fight a onslaught of biplanes on top of the Empire State Building. But because there's a speedrun and Kong unfortunately has to die, I'm kind of just going to stand here and just cop a, uh, a hailstorm of bullets. So I just need to be in the way. Oh, that didn't work. And you'll notice that the lower uh, he sinks onto the... Uh, when he's holding onto the pillar is the like your health, I guess. weird. So sometimes the bullets don't, it's probably because I've died a few times, so it's actually made the game easier, so I die in, in less hits. But I was waiting for this guy to shoot at me. Cool. So now you can hear the, uh, the intense sad music playing, so it pretty much means I'm one shot. So I just need to go through the animation, boom. So we're getting really close to time. Ah, uh, so, let's get ready for it. But then we'll go on and play the uh, alternative ending where we save our boy Harambe. So this part is uh, really bad when it comes to PB attempts, because especially looking at your timer, uh, <laughs> It's really nerve-wracking. When I finally got my third place, watching the I, I got um I got third by it was not it was like 15 seconds, but watching the clock tick down was like so nerve-wracking because I knew I was like so close, but yet how long this takes? I think this this part's roughly about a minute and a half. Um but wondering if that was good enough was uh it really killed me up until I hit uh pause timer and then I celebrated like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> cool. Um, and... Just waiting. See what I mean? It takes forever. And it's time. Cool. But now for the, um... 
incentive. Oh, so what was that time, by the way? Was it? Uh, that time was two oh nine eighteen. Cool. So that's still a uh, still a third place finish. I'm, I'm happy with that's that. Still pretty good. While you're uh, while you're saving our boy Harambe, um, do you have any shout outs you want to do? Uh, promo? Yeah, just uh, if you like what you saw or you like me, uh, twitch.tv forward slash profit black underscore. Uh, I speed run this game um, and just play a lot of variety stuff. Um, obviously, this is the game I, I speed run the most. Um, which, see me, I'm on the cusp of second place in a new PB. I'll be probably sinking a few more hours into this, but yeah, I'm a variety streamer at best as well. So, yeah, and uh, very nice. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. So. Also, while you're saving Kong, I have a quick donation here with $20 from Cardi, who says, Speaking of monkeys, this donation goes to Gong Gong for the Super Monkey Ball Run. Nice. Also, shout out to everyone for uh, for the Saving Kong. So, the difference between this one and uh, Saving Kong, uh, sorry, Saving Kong and letting him die, is I actually have to now try to avoid the aeroplanes and survive for, I'm not sure how long it is. It feels like forever, but it must only be a couple of minutes. And then a, an interesting thing happens. There we go. So if you look closely like underneath where Kong is, you actually can see Anne. Uh, she's chilling on the left-hand side at the moment, but she does run back and forth. Uh, that's something I really noticed somewhat recently. Mainly because you probably can't really see it when you play it on the PS2 or whatever. <laughs> Graphically, it's really poor. Damn it. There you go. Get on this back side, safe side. Oh god. So if you try to survive uh, normally, you just get hit with like an absolute onslaught with aeroplanes. So this, this is a funny part. If you look at the front of the plane, in a, now, they haven't made a character model for Jack. <laughs> He's just a black silhouette. He's like, you haven't unlocked him yet. So this was definitely a, um, interesting for me when I was first playing it. So what also happens here is I still have to be careful that... So the guys still attack um, Kong and myself. And lucky for me, I'm kind of okay at flying aeroplanes. So... Me dying right there is uh, because they've be nailing Kong. But what I have to now try to do is try kill as many of these aeroplanes as I can. I think there's mainly three or four that come at me. But they like to whoop de whop and try to avoid me. So there's another one over there. And also if there's no collision I don't think so you can kind of just like fly, uh, fly straight into them. And it's fine. So I think there's one more plane I have to get. There we go. Cool, that should be fine, I think. It's got to wait for him to crash to the earth. Where's he gone? So yeah, there we go. We saved Kong. We got the happy ending, people. Thanks to you guys. Thank you, everyone, for donating. Awesome stuff. Thank you very much for that awesome run. No worries. Uh, everyone at home, please stick around. We have a nice little mystery bonus run coming up for you. We'll see you in a few minutes. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.